the noble hunter, the precision killer, suffocating its victim swiftly and cleanly every time. But is this squeaky clean image of the King of the Beasts really true? We track one ply that goes in for a messier kind of killing, sometimes digging straight in, eating prey alive. As we follow the fortunes of a new litter of cubs, we ask, where do these habits come from? And are they here to stay? Is this typical behavior, or will we write them off as lions behaving badly? It's a classic African scene. The lions look unruffled. The Cape Buffalo, opponents built like tanks, size up for a dirty fight. Lions have developed what looks like the perfect kill. They've got combined power of the pride to bring down these giants. Custom-built jaws to crush the windpipe. The kiss of death, quick and clean. Textbook stuff. But in Makalola, Zimbabwe, one lion family seems to play by different rules. When these lions kill, they cut corners. Right now, one-year-old cubs swell the pride's numbers. Unusually, seven of the eight babies are male. Could this be a clue as to why this pride hunts the way it does? In the pride, it's the dominant male who pulls the strings. But for all the lions living here, the buffalo are the key to survival. Smaller prey just isn't going to provide enough food for a lion pride of this size. There is one sister to the seven brothers. Born to Laduma, the senior female, Eby's future looks rosy. All she needs to do is copy mum. But Laduma is set to have a harder job training her sons in the art of the kill. Two sons already look set to shine. Malu has brawn, while Kimba has brains. Together, they could really stir things up. But first, and crucially, the youngsters must learn to hunt. Their days in the security of the pride are numbered. They hang out with the top lionesses. Our first insight into how this pride does business. Mardi, identified by a radio collar, is often on hand as a second mentor to the cubs. This is on-the-job training, and Mardi also acts as a backup to her sister, the Duma, during attacks. When hunting, they're the ones the cubs will need to watch. At all other times, it's the pride male, Panwi, who keeps the family members in line. At 180 kilos, more than twice the weight of a man, he demands respect, even from the oldest lioness. If he senses a challenge, things could turn nasty. Panwi's been in charge for nearly three years in this part of Zimbabwe's Wangi National Park. His territory, thick scrubland in the Makalolo Depression, supports especially large herds of buffalo. The cubs will have to learn how to take on animals weighing four times as much as a lion, with tempers to match. 
As the cubs mature, they get a chance to take part in a proper hunt. Buffalo come to battle equipped with some of the heaviest and deadliest horns in the animal kingdom. Lesson number one, know how to pick the easiest target. When the largest buffalo close ranks, the herd is almost invincible. Laduma takes the lead. She's always up front. But how will the rookies react to the buffalo front line? Confident and strong, Laduma storms in. She's got a calf in her sights. The two boys approach from the flank. The buffalo fight back. The Duma lets go and the cubs scatter. But she won't give up that easily and sneaks in for another go. But the herd now has the upper hand. The cub's first practical lesson ends in a reality check. What went wrong? It all started well. Laduma grabbed her chance. A calf isolated when the herd panicked. But her sons and the rest of the pride failed to back her up in time. This gave the buffalo the chance to regroup. In the end, the lions were outmaneuvered by their prey. Strength in numbers and team play won the day. Buffalo won, lions nil. These cubs have got a lot to learn. The buffalo calf has two. She had a narrow escape, but at least she inherited excellent defensive skills. She's going to need them. Three months earlier, she spent a few hours as a helpless newborn. Still wet with afterbirth, she struggled to her feet and within days joined the safety of the herd. She'll have to use all her natural born resilience to survive the lions of Makalolo. It's the driest part of the year, and the pride has got used to waiting for easier meals. As animals fall victim to thirst, hunger, and exhaustion, the lion's darker side seems to emerge. An injured elephant calf hauls itself through the undergrowth. Noisy enough to attract attention. The wrong kind of attention. It looks like the end of the road for this baby. Earlier, a pushy buffalo herd unsettled an elephant family at a water hole. In the stampede, the calf panicked, fell and was trampled. It was left for dead. But on broken legs, it spent the intervening hours dragging itself towards cover. 
it's in no state to defend itself. Usually, we'd expect lions to suffocate their prey by clamping the victim's windpipe before they tuck in. This is the first time Laduma's sons, Marlu and Kimber, have encountered a situation like this. What will they do? Dawn reveals the events of the night before. The lions started eating hours ago, but they haven't yet killed the baby elephant. Although still alive, it barely moves. Trauma has probably pushed it into a semi-coma. To human eyes, this might look brutal, but we can't judge lions by our rules. Young cubs like Ibi, Malu and Kimba must follow the ways of the pride. They just copy their elders. So, what has caused the older Makalola lionesses to dispense with the swift kill? Maybe the clue is in the victim's behavior. This baby elephant didn't put up a fight. Is a quick, clinical kill only necessary to subdue a struggling victim. The calf died sometime later. But the pride's movements after this might reveal what's behind their unusual behavior. They left and returned to the carcass several times. To leave a meal unattended like this suggests they don't have rivals for their food. In the heart of the territory defended by Pamwi, Laduma's family lives unchallenged. This isn't unique among wild lions, but it's a rare luxury. Laduma knew that the baby elephant couldn't escape. With no pressure to be fast and efficient, even hardwired hunting instincts can be short-circuited. Who wouldn't save their energy, given the opportunity? Their instinct to sleep for up to 20 hours a day, though, seems right on track. More clues about why these lions kill the way they do are found all around. Although Wangi National Park is largely a wilderness, man-made boreholes were sunk in the Makalolo area to help the wildlife get through the dry season. Elephants, like all the grazing animals here, will travel huge distances every day to get water. When two heavyweights want the same thing, sometimes the pressure valves burst. steady stream of drinkers coming through the lion's territory, it makes sense that the lions have adapted their hunting methods to make the most of the bounty. But the question for the cubs is this. Was eating an animal alive just a one-off? Or are they likely to make a habit of it? Night. Pamwi's pride has woken up and is on the hunt again. More training for the cubs. The Duma is yet again the linchpin. It's not unusual for adult females to do most of the work during hunting, but tonight, she has an even bigger job. Malu's strength and Kimber's wit have improved, but to make their contribution count, their mother needs to show them something new.
tonight. Can they help coordinate the attack and show the buffalo they mean business? The calves, small and vulnerable, are kept at the center of the herd, out of the firing line. Even for a lion, this huge wall of living flesh is formidable, and they lose their nerve. Maybe the buffalo sense a weakness in the lion's battle strategy. Can they spot the incompetence of Laduma's sons? Who knows? But the massive herbivores stand their ground against their oppressors. Once again, Laduma's sons have failed to raise their game. Such a sloppy approach would leave most young males with a hungry and desperate future ahead of them. But Makalolo, yet again, offers them a soft option. Another tiny elephant calf wanders alone. Born only a few weeks previously, he's been abandoned by his herd. Newborn elephants are prone to attack, and sensing danger, his mother and concerned aunts try to push the calf to its feet. but he just wasn't strong enough. His family stuck with him at first, but eventually had no choice but to leave him and let nature take its course. He survived the first days alone, but unprotected, he faces grave danger. The pride has picked up his scent. baby gets a lucky break. A bull elephant crashes onto the scene, stalling the lion's attack. They wait to see what will happen next. remains at risk. Will a bull elephant, an unpredictable loner, tolerate a calf? They seem to form an unlikely alliance. But a male elephant isn't inclined to watch over a lost baby. Their companionship can only last a few hours. The calf stumbles on alone. The African bush takes no hostages. The sick and needy stand out as beacons to the hungry and opportunistic.
vultures are already here. Predicting impending doom is their speciality. Trumped by nightfall, they must wait for another day. They don't call it the lion's share for nothing. They will get the most of this easy meal. And dehydrated, probably traumatized, the baby elephant gives up the ghost, sparing itself from a more gruesome death. Malu and Kimi, now juveniles, don't know it, but this will be the last time they feed so easily. They've got competition. Little do they realize that their mother, Laduna, is pregnant again. Malu, Kimba, and their five brothers will soon need to think about moving on. Three and a half months ago, Pamwi picked up the smells, telling him the lionesses were ready to mate. He mounted them several times an hour for four days, a sexual marathon. The birth of a new litter will mark a turning point in the lives of Malu and Kimba. With more mouths to feed, it's crunch time. The extra competition means life will get tougher from here on in. Although they've grown in strength and confidence, the brothers still haven't made a kill. The time for lessons is almost over. Perhaps sensing that they need a game plan, they give their mother some proper backup. It's a turning point for the boys. The buffalo look rattled. A fast charge confuses the herd, and in the chaos, there's a straggler. But two young guns have narrow odds against a buffalo army. It's time for all the brothers to get involved. By spreading out to create a buffalo front line, a standoff ensues. The lions still need an old hand for the finishing touch. This time, it's their aunt, Marty, who backs up the boys. The cubs did help to execute a classic ambush, but they still can't finish the job. The rest of the buffaloes have sensibly backed off. So Laduma takes this opportunity to teach her sons another crucial lesson. Instead of quickly suffocating the calf herself, she lets it go for the young males to kill. With this opportunity suddenly thrust upon them, the cubs seem confused, lazy even. It's like watching a domestic cat playing with its food. Are these lions simply not hungry enough to make a kill? It's highly unusual to see a lion hold back its killer instinct. Even Mardi has a casual approach to the kill. Then, the calf suddenly struggles a little, and a primal instinct kicks in. Mardi grabs the animal's throat. A little sustained pressure, and the calf will suffocate. But she doesn't see it through. Is Mardi? hoping the cubs will come back and have a go. 
Or is she too suffering from the same laid-back attitude towards killing? Even faced with the wrath and weaponry of the Cape Buffalo, can they simply not be bothered to learn to kill in the classic way? It's nightfall before the lions tuck in. Round here, death does not always come quickly. Marlow and Kimber have other problems to deal with. Soon, Along with their brothers, they will be forced to leave, but they must sharpen up their act. Family dynamics are changing. The growing males are showing dominance over their mothers, but they still can't handle killing on their own. In lion society, Dominant males rarely make the kill when with the pride, but they usually monopolize the meal. Panwi turns up right on cue. Kimber and Marlow give him space. The two brothers are developing a close bond, a bond that could, one day, put them into direct competition with their father. To keep the young upstarts in check, Pamwi moves in to shake things up. Pamwi's grown-up cubs now crowd the carcass. So, he turns on them. A good lesson has been learned. Big males eat first. Kimber grabs what he can and retreats. The new litter of young cubs gets preferential treatment. From now on, the adults will look out for them. The patriarch is just marking time before his older sons inevitably leave the pride. Even an innocent attempt by Kimber to make contact with his father is met with irritation. Tensions within the Pride simmer on into October. Then the Makalolo heatwave begins. Temperatures up in the 30s drain the colour from the landscape. Dust storms sweep through, and even the man made boreholes dry up. lead the pride deeper into the parched scrub. Kimber, Marlu and the other large cubs still trek with the family. With food getting harder to find, they remain an essential part of the team. Their mothers, however, will be watching their every move. The new cubs are now the priority. What's left of the waterholes 
Thousands of feet and hooves churn the mud into a potential death trap. Adult elephants indulge in the usual skincare routine, but for a baby, it's a new danger. The mud acts like quicksand, sinking the calf to its stomach. It's not strong enough to pull itself free, and the more it wriggles, the more the mud sucks the calf in. The elephants in this area have already lost two calves. But this time, the mother successfully intervenes, tenderly coaxing with a massive foot and easing her calf free. The mud is a real menace. Buffalo have broad, flat hooves to stay on top of it, but invisible holes riddle the pool. Once you slip in, the mud draws you down further. For two days, this helpless cow bakes under the glaring sun. Nighttime brings little relief. Jackals become constant companions. They're waiting for the surface mud to harden and create a pathway to the feast. On the third morning, the buffalo faces an even worse fate. The Makololo pride turns up. As usual, it's Laduma who takes the responsibility. To get a good hold on the animal, Laduma will need to reach it without getting stuck herself. If she can, her pride will eat well. Mud makes lions nervous, so she cautiously edges over the sun-baked crust. Even though she could simply start feeding at the soft rump, Laduma seems to want to show the cubs a textbook kill. She can't reach the windpipe. Instead, she holds the buffalo snout, long enough to bring a quick end. It's a mystery why Laduma chose to go for a traditional kill this time. But she set a new example to her cubs and shown them that they need to take every situation on its merits and think on their feet. This buffalo could have appeared more threatening than we think. If it had struggled, it could have dragged one of the lions into the mud. Maybe by killing it first, Laduma made sure they could eat in safety. The juvenile lions have bought some extra time by feeding on animals already weak from the hardships of the dry season. But for Kimba and Marlu, these lazy days hanging out with their mother and relying on her to provide their food are numbered. Nearly fully grown, the boy cubs have huge appetites and growing aspirations. 
November brings long-awaited relief from the heat. Five millimetres of rain falls every day for weeks on end. Gradually, the rains rejuvenate the scorched landscape. Animals that laid low or stuck closely to whatever water they could find can now roam again to feed and breed. The annual baby boom has arrived. Soon after giving birth, many mothers come into heat. Males lock horns to win the right to breed with them. Zebra males lash out, nipping each other and kicking with their powerful legs. But one zebra mare stands quietly by. Her stillborn foal has lain dead for over 24 hours, but still she continues to watch over it. Jackals hover nearby. One animal's tragedy is another's meal and the chance to produce a family of their own. The rains bring abundance in Makololo, but also upheaval. The juveniles in the lion pride face a trying time. They must earn their keep and regularly take part in the hunt. The new litter has grown fast, and now Kimba, Marlu and the others find even more competition around the kill. But for juvenile males, the cold shoulder treatment is an essential part of growing up. Instinctively, they know not to fight for their place, and they know their father well enough. He would stamp out any challenge to his authority. But after the meal, the family fault lines temporarily close over, and they enjoy a bit of quality time. The young cubs are catching up fast, and the lionesses have their work cut out. The older siblings have only a little time left before they are pushed out. Increasingly, the adolescent gang rests up away from the main pride. Even the lionesses are getting tired of the older cubs, and they're always under the watchful gaze of Pamwi. Such a formidable coalition. Seven new males who could one day threaten Pamwi's status as Lord of Makalolo. Their success will depend on their friendship. Even without their siblings, Kimber and Marlu could form a double act that would offer stiff competition to their father for access to females and to hunting opportunities. Their only sister will stay with the family. Only rarely do females leave their mother's clan. Her brothers have to go before they reach sexual maturity at the age of two or three. And round here, 
they will have to hunt buffalo in order to have any chance at all. Kimba and Malu face a dangerous and unpredictable world. They will have to cross countless other territories. Neighboring pride males will be ready to defend their turf to the death. With their manes starting to grow thick and new surges of testosterone coursing through their veins, it won't be long before they want to go. Let's hope they've learned enough to take on new rivals. They have come a long way. The innocent games from their nursery have evolved into elaborate moves on the battlefield. It's taken months of trial and error, but finally, Kimba and Malu and the rest of the brothers rise to hunt as one. And today, suddenly, everything seems different. They are seeking the ultimate challenge, and this time, will tackle it in their very own way. For once, they have no adult lionesses to dig them out of a hole, but they rise to the occasion. Good teamwork helps them locate and ambush a solitary buffalo bull. The old bull knows lions hate getting their feet wet. Plunging in buys him time. Malu courageously wades in. Out of his depth and alone, he can do nothing. And what's more, this bull has attitude. Malu and his brothers don't just give up anymore. They've grown in maturity and in patience. Working together, they prove they can cope on their own. The buffalo bull remains under siege. The lions play safe, rightly so. A false step and they'd slip into the spearing range of one of those deadly horns. They stake out the bank, harassing and wearing down the cornered buffalo. Despite their persistence, there's a last-minute hitch. A bull elephant shows up at the waterhole. It's a distraction, which the buffalo seizes as a chance to escape. On this occasion, luck ran against them but even seasoned hunters regularly miss their target. The elephant may have thwarted their attack, but the experience undoubtedly sharpened their wits. Aware of their growing stature, Pamwi sprays his territory. A reminder to Kimba and Malu not to rise above themselves. The good times are over. By June, everything dries up again. But 
the young lions remain on a roll. Winter brings their biggest and toughest test yet. The buffalo herd bulges with youngsters. Some of them were born at the same time as our lion cubs. They've survived and now weigh in at a sturdy 400 kilos. More muscle to strengthen the buffalo line of defense. These buffalo may have good odds for this fight, but their enemies have come of age too. Both sides know that a battle is inevitable. Kimba, Malu and their brothers are under pressure to leave Makalolo. Could this be their moment to finally graduate from Laduma's hunting academy? Laduma does what comes naturally to her and spearheads the attack. After several mock charges, they succeed in isolating a young buffalo. Kimber claws into her back to hold her. The adult buffalo turn back, but the lions remain focused. Staying well away from the sharp end, Malu and Kimber finally help Laduma bring the animal down. Laduma led the hunt, but a triumphant son, Malu, muscles in to claim the prize. Question is, what will he do next? The buffalo haven't given up, so Laduma sets off to confront them again. She successfully holds them off, buying her sons more time. Although the cubs have been a great help, it looks like the final responsibility still falls to their mother. She goes straight for the windpipe. Suffocation brings death in minutes. For these cubs, it looks like they won't learn to finish their prey off until they've left home and are forced to do it for themselves but at least they've shown that the unconventional habits they experienced when they were very young aren't necessarily here to stay. Under intense pressure, this new generation has learned what it takes to be noble, efficient killers. Just in time. An excursion into the territory next door gives Malu and Kimba a huge fright, when Pamwi's nearest competitor gives them a real taste of things to come. Realising it's time to leave, Malu and Kimba lead the exodus. Their father now has a new litter to help the females with the hunt. But they go armed with the experience to survive beyond the cosy world of Makalolo. In time, this powerful coalition of brothers will rule the bush elsewhere. For their mother, it's business as usual. The cycle of feast and famine in Makalolo goes on, and Laduma will continue to roll with the punches. Whether that involves killing her victim first will be down to what seems best at the time. Lions are not the clean-cut, noble hunters we like to think they are. Just like us, they will cut corners and take the easy route whenever they can. And if that means eating their prey alive, so be it. But these lions aren't behaving badly. They are just being themselves. 